physics the hell out of this. All right, so I'll admit that as we sit here, it is a bit difficult for us to wrap our heads around the fact that the Earth is actually rotating at a thousand miles an hour. We don't feel that, we feel stationary. And it appears as if the sun and all the stars in the sky are the ones moving and not us. But the thing is, we're all moving with Earth. From the day we were born up until right now, all we've ever known is an Earth that rotates at roughly a thousand miles an hour. It's never changed its speed. And it's only when the speed changes do you actually feel movement? Think about when you go driving in a car, for example. On a motorway, cruise control on 70 miles an hour. You don't notice that you're moving. You feel stationary sat in the seat in the car. It's only when you change your speed, i.e. you accelerate, you slam on the brakes, that you all of a sudden become aware of the fact that you were moving. This is one of the most fundamental laws of physics. If you're moving at a constant speed, you're not aware of that movement. Anyone who's been skydiving will recognize this. After you've jumped out of the plane, you accelerate as you're pulled down to earth, but eventually you reach your terminal velocity, the fastest that you're gonna speed up to. And that is a constant speed. If you closed your eyes at that speed, you would have no idea that you were actually falling. And so the same is true for the Earth rotating at a thousand miles an hour or even orbiting the sun at 67,000 miles an hour. We're not aware of that speed because we've always been moving at that speed. It's only if the Earth's rotation came to some shuddering halt or started to speed up that we'd all suddenly be aware of the fact that we'd been moving this entire time. Now going back to our car analogy or even our skydiving analogy as well, one way that you obviously can tell you're moving is if you open the sunroof or the window and you stick your head out and you can feel the air rushing past. So you might wonder, well, how come we can't feel the air rushing past at a thousand miles an hour while the Earth spins? Well, that's because the atmosphere of Earth actually rotates with the Earth as well. It's actually held there by gravity. This is the reason why it takes the same amount of time to fly east to west as it does west to east. The plane is still in the atmosphere, which is moving with the Earth as it rotates. It's not like the Earth is rotating underneath the atmosphere as the plane flies. Now, I guess you might be thinking, well, if we could pop our head out of the atmosphere, then that would be the equivalent of popping your head out of the sunroof to, to feel the movement of the car. But space is a vacuum, so you wouldn't feel a thousand mile an hour wind in your hair because there's no air in space, so there's no wind, and so there would be no molecules to exert any sort of pressure on your face as you moved through space. So how do we even know that the Earth is moving then? Well, just like in a car, you don't have to stick your head out of the window, do you? You could just look out the window and see that the objects are moving past you and infer therefore that you must be moving. Do the same thing on Earth, except the objects that we look at are the things in the sky, like the sun and the stars. There's a great video from astrophotographer Arye Nirenberg, which fixes the positions of the stars and then shows you the relative movement of Earth to them. And so you can really clearly see how the Earth moves even over just three hours of time in this time lapse. I could watch this video all day. I, I just love how it gives you this incredible perspective of both our place on Earth, but also the, the true nature and the scale of the universe that surrounds us. So even as we sit here feeling very stationary, know that we always have and always will be moving through life at a thousand miles an hour. Before we get to the bloopers, I just wanna thank this week's video sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a website with interactive courses on loads of different areas of science and maths, which break down problems into easy to understand chunks so that you learn by doing, and they're fun as well. If you like this video, then you should check out their Physics of the Everyday course, which covers everything you've ever been curious about, from the physics of sports, like skiing, gymnastics, and baseball, to the physics of weather patterns and hurricanes. I've always had a weird fascination with extreme weather. Just, I think it's the idea that these initial conditions that through the laws of physics create something that's both chaotic and ordered at the same time. It's mind blowing. 
Brilliant breaks all that down for you so you can understand what's going on. So if that sounds like something that you would be up for and you want to support me and my channel, then head over to brilliant.org forward slash Dr. Becky. That's D-R-B-E-C-K-Y and sign up completely for free. Plus, the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is pretty cool in my book. So thanks so much for Brilliant for that. But one more thing before we roll those bloopers, in my previous video, how I use code as an astrophysicist, so many of you asked me the exact same question, which was, what music do you listen to while you code? So I figured the easiest way was to make a playlist and share it with you all. I've linked it in the description below. It's really the tracks that get me really pumped up when I wanna really focus and get some code written. But when I'm doing things like reading or writing instead, I don't tend to listen to music. Instead, I tend to listen to ASMR. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, it stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. And the science behind it is really still in its infancy and we don't really understand it. But essentially what it is, is this oddly relaxing, tingling sensation that some people experience when exposed to certain types of sounds like tapping or whispering. Now, I don't really understand why a lot of people have this tingly response, but it's thought to maybe have something to do with the sounds you heard as a baby. Now, a lot of people find it really helps them to fall asleep, but for me, it really aids in concentration. It really sort of relaxes my mind so that I can concentrate on a specific task, like writing or reading. I think because like the, the tapping and the whispering maybe reminds me of like being in a library, I guess, which I really missed like working from home, that sort of oddly hushed environment. It's sort of a way to recreate that. So I wanted to shout out one of my friends, Sarah, who has an ASMR channel. I listen to her stuff all the time. She's an engineer, so a fellow woman in science too. And she loves the fact that, you know, she contributes to astrophysics research in just a tiny way from the fact that I listen to her videos to concentrate while I'm writing papers or writing telescope proposals. So go check out her channel. I've linked it in the video description below and keep an eye out for a video she's got coming very soon where she's gonna be listing some space facts that I've sent to her as well. So I know that you'll all enjoy that one, so. Head over there and say hi from me. And now we can roll those bloopers. Why <laughs> <laughs> that make such a weird noise? <laughs> oh. Not really lipstick pick. It's never changed. Is that a motorbike? What was that? Oh, it's a plane. Oh. Oh, the autumnal color out there is really pretty today. I need to go and walk. Distracted, sorry. <laughs> I've looked at the evidence and I believe that planet Earth turns at a thousand miles an hour. It stands for Autonomous Meridian Sensory Response. No, that's AMSR. <laughs>